Welcome to the live stream. In this session, we're going to be focused on fundamentals. So if you're new to the game, ask any questions you want. Hi, Katie. Yes, we are live. Evelyn, hi, AKA Long Island. All right, I'll have to make that connection. So I know next time, I'm not sure if I made that connection before. Hi, Jerry and Sharon, welcome. Okay, so Evelyn said she's been playing since June, so she's not too bad off, that's good. So we're, we're going to be talking about fundamentals. <laughs> You're the uh, comedian. So if any, let me know how long you've been playing American Mahjong in the chat. <clears throat> so that I know how deep to go in fundamentals. I haven't logged in yet. Also let me know if you play online. And bear with me because my throat is going in and out. Hold on. <coughs> <coughs> I should say my, my vocal cords are kind of still, I guess, healing from this bronchitis. So bear with me. Okay, uh, <coughs> not really. <coughs> I still got this cough and it kind of sneaks up on me when I'm not expecting it. And sometimes talking and the airflow through my throat can trigger a cough. <coughs> okay, so Martha says she's been playing since September against bots at real mahjong time or real mahjong okay that's great if, if you can practice online that that's a wonderful way to gain some confidence with decision making between live games so katie says she's been playing for three years but teaching at the senior center center you follow the lesson plan excellent and you play online a lot okay excellent very good Okay, so Sharon said she learned last winter, so <clears throat> a little over a year. Played for four months, back to playing again, practicing with solitaire. Could use refreshers, okay. Uh, Patricia says, um, let's see. Oh, thank you, Patricia. Okay, she's a connoisseur of uh, Mahjong versions, National Mahjong League, Hong Kong, and MCR. Very good, Patricia. That's uh, ambitious and wonderful. All the versions have pros and cons, I guess you could say. I, I love different elements from all of them. So kudos to you for learning them. Let's see. Oh, Evelyn said to look into a humidifier. Yeah, I... We uh, <coughs> we live in the south, so I haven't thought about getting a humidifier, but that would probably help, actually. Uh, let's see. Okay, excellent. All right, well, let's see. So what would you say, if everyone could write in the chat, what is your greatest pain point? And then we'll start and focus on those things. So if you can identify your greatest pain point, write it in the, in the chat. Okay, Sharon said apple or pineapple juice is good for coughs. <coughs> okay, well, I like pineapple juice. <clears throat> I might even have some in the pantry. I'll have to look at that. Okay, picking hands can be a problem. So picking a hand. Uh, now, I do have a, three videos called how to pick a hand three ways. Have you seen those videos? And when I teach how to play, I always teach to build around multiples first. If you have a multiple, that's where you should start. If you don't have a multiple, then you look for the predominant pattern. So multiple first, then the predominant pattern. And you pick a category that will use the multiple or the predominant pattern with as many tiles as you can gather 
and then you play that category that uses the most of your tiles. Hopefully that will identify some discards for you to do the first pass, and you just take it pass by pass. You really don't have to pick a hand till you run out of discards. But <clears throat> when, I think about, I'd say six months ago, or it was right before those three videos were released, Somebody tried to play at the category level and not pick a hand till they ran out of discards. And it, it um, stressed them out. They, they felt anxiety with that. They felt like they really needed to pick a hand. So I thought, all right, everybody's a little different. Everybody has different tolerance with stress and the need to pick a hand could be stronger for some than others. So I thought, why not come up with some other ways to build around the strength of your hand, pick a hand or maybe wait to pick a hand. And that's where I thought, focus at the category level for the strongest beginning, for the most flexibility. Don't pick a hand till you run out of discards. Then another way that you could do it is play at the category level during the Charleston. And then after the Charleston, pick a hand and stick with it. That way you know what hand you're playing. If it doesn't work out, then you'll have to reassess and find another way to go or switch to defense. And then the third way to play, of course, is to just pick a hand. And that is a, a challenge because sometimes you'll paint yourself into a corner and you won't have options if that particular hand falls through. So the style of play with the greatest flexibility is going to be to play at the category level for as long as possible until you have to commit to a hand. And a lot of times that would be the second exposure. So you could even be into the middle game before you're actually committing to a hand. If that creates too much anxiety and you're not enjoying the game, we'll try to do that just through the Charleston and then pick a hand after the Charleston. Focus on that hand. When it, if, it, if it comes to fruition, great. If not, then try to find another hand to play or switch to defense. And then of course the third way is just to pick a hand from the get-go. But that one is going to be the most limiting. So you, you've got to keep in mind how flexible do you want to be and how much stress do you need to relieve in order to have a good time. So it, it could be any it could be a hybrid of all those things. You just kind of have to test it out and see where your comfort level is. But overall, the best way to play is category level for as long as possible. When you run out of discards, that's when you pick a hand. Let me know what you all think about that. Does that give you anxiety or are you comfortable playing that way? Okay, so let me catch up on, um, on the uh, chat. Martha says that you see something in the initial deal, but you find it hard to make good decisions through the Charleston. Okay, we'll talk about the Charleston a lot in this session. Okay, Patricia says picking a hand and then having to switch after tiles go down. Okay, good. So for you, the key is going to be keeping options. Don't just pick a tile and discard it consider what can be my options and discard tiles that are outside the category that you're playing. If you actually picked a hand, consider the category, keep tiles in that category and discard tiles that you know you don't need. That way you'll have a plan B. So that'll be good for you. Okay, Katie says that she spends a lot of time teaching the card and even though I see your multiples or the predominant pattern strategies with the students, <coughs> they always feel they need to pick a hand right away. Yes. <coughs> That's actually very common because they're looking at that card and they know that these are their only options. 52 to play. But because the the hands are by category, they share a lot of the same tiles. So if you just gather for the category You'll have options. You really don't have to pick a hand, but for those players who really feel the need to pick a hand, let them pick a hand. A lot of times you could even use that as a learning lesson and explain so-and-so picked a hand, but they weren't able to complete it because of this or that. And you, more times than not, picking a hand early doesn't have as great a result as playing at the category level over time. 
maybe, maybe this is what I've done in my last lesson, excuse me, <coughs> in my last lesson, I had two players pick a hand from the beginning of the Charleston, right when they get their dealt hand. We picked a hand for each one of them, and we called that fixed. So they were playing a fixed style of play. They picked a hand. The other two players played adaptive, where they played at the category level. They gathered for the category, and they played it out. When they ran out of discards, they picked a hand. And then we compared results at the end of the game. And if you do that a number of times, you'll see that the adaptive style of play is more flexible and usually more uh, has a higher win rate than the fixed style of play. That's what I have found anyway. All right, so Katie said, a uh, good idea about not focusing on the specific hand until after the Charleston. Yeah, so have them play at the category level after the Charleston pick a hand. So I call that a hybrid, where it's adaptive at the beginning through the Charleston, adaptive through the Charleston, then fixed once the Charleston is over. So play either fit, um, play either fixed where you pick a hand from the very beginning. Then you have adaptive fixed where you play at the category level, then pick a hand after the Charleston. And then the third way is adaptive the whole way through where you play at the category level till you run out of discards, then you pick a hand. And it's very situational as to when that might happen. It just depends on how things go with your decision making. Sometimes you can you don't even have to pick a hand till the end game. You really should know what hand you're playing though by the end of the third wall typically. All right. So, let's go ahead and join a table and let's see if we can prove some of these theories. We'll go ahead and get started. So, it seems like for today's group that picking a hand, when to pick a hand, Charleston decision making are the two pain points. When to pick a hand and Charleston decision making, if that makes sense. Okay, Martha said that she's found that adaptive is the um, the best, but also finding something when in, when no longer viable. Okay, switching. So how to switch. So three, let's say we have three objectives today. How and when to pick a hand. Then Charleston decision making and how to switch. Those three objectives. That's what we'll focus on. The first one is going to be picking a hand and we'll do three different ways. We'll do fixed and then we'll do a hybrid and then we'll do adaptive. Here we go. Three goals. I think that's good too. I think we can do that in an hour and a half. So let's see if we can find a table. Here's one right here, auto pass. So I'm going to go ahead and join that. Okay, so we just need two players. The first thing we're going to focus on, or the first game that we're going to play here, we'll do fixed, where we're going to pick a hand. We're still going to focus on the strength of the hand, but we'll go ahead and pick a hand and see what happens. Now, the challenge is going to be, that'll be three hands, that's 45 minutes, let's see, yeah, that's 45 minutes right there. 45 minutes on how to pick a hand. So we'll have to keep that in mind. 45 minutes, how to pick a hand. And then we could play a game where we focus on how to switch a hand. Oh, no, 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 Charleston decision making. We can kind of hit Charleston decision making in every game we play. So we can hit that every single game. And then how to switch a hand. If it comes up, we'll talk about it. Otherwise, we'll focus on the latter part. So I, I think this will work. <coughs> so we're waiting for one more player to join. And I do, I will put, let's see here. I am going to make available the lesson handout 
that I give players in my lessons. This will be for the fundamentals. Let's see here. Let me think a second because, yeah, because we're going to focus on fundamentals. So I'll give you a link to basic, the basic training reference that I give players at my lessons. And in there is going to be probably everything that we talk about during this live stream. So let's see what we have to work with here. <clears throat> this is going to be a good one because we have no jokers and no flowers. We have two pair, four and five. Those are consecutive. Since those multiples are consecutive, we're going to play a consecutive run hand. We actually have a tile, the dragon here, that matches. So let's say we focus on the fifth hand down. We'll play the fifth hand down under consecutive run. But as an option, we're going to hold the, let's see, let's get rid of an eight. Let, actually, let's get rid of a two. Okay, here we go. We're going to keep options. So I'm going to hold other four, five, three, four, five, two, three, four, or even four, five, six. So we'll hold two through six, let's say, just as an option. So we're just going to keep them all. Anything in a range around your multiples. We actually picked a hand, fifth hand down under consecutive run. Uh, we need three flowers. Then we need, let's see, let's give up the seven. We, we need three flowers, Kongs of two consecutive numbers, and then the dragon. So we're going to hold two through six, just as options. Here we did pick up a multiple, two multiples, seven and nine. But we, we have picked a hand, so we're going to stick with it. We're going to have to break these up. Either break them up or give up the, let's say, the two. So let's just give up one of the multiples. So we're still playing the fifth hand down. We still have a five crack as an option. Now we have a four. So there is an option to play the hand just below it, maybe. And this is where if, if your hand falls through, keep options. And that's what the four or five crack are. We're keeping options. So we are on the second Charleston passing left. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and break up the seven right now. I don't want to get stuck with a pair in case we get everything we need. Yes, uh, Martha, this is the first game, and we're playing the fifth hand down under consecutive run. We're playing a fixed style of play where we picked a hand right from the beginning. Now we have a gap, no flowers, so this is risky. If you have a gap, I typically recommend not going that route, but we're focused on a fixed style of play, so we're picking a hand for the strength that we have, and that would be the pairs of four and five. Yes, the first game is fixed. Okay, we got a keeper, the green dragon. Incidentally, I try not to pass two dragons together. For example, we could maybe switch to that pair hand, second from the bottom. We don't have to pick a hand yet, really, if I were not playing fixed, I would be flexible here. But we have everything but flowers for this fifth hand down that we picked from the beginning. Why would you have done, what would you have done with the other pairs if it weren't fixed? I probably would have kept the sevens and maybe as an option hoped for sixes because then we could play the second hand down under consecutive run. Now here we were given like numbers with twos. They only want two tiles, so we're going to pass two, and we can stick with our plan, four, five, consecutive run, hand number five. And that was because we built around the multiples, which were pair four, pair five, and bams at the very beginning. That's what we were dealt. So we have six discards right now, if you include the four, five dragon oh and, and the cracks. What we really need here are flowers. Eight dot. So we're going to discard the one dot, eight dot, and the seven crack. Let's go ahead and discard the eight. Eight characters. 
So we're I'm going to move these over here to the right so that the hand that we picked is more predominant there on the left. What we're missing, as you can see here, are flowers. If I were not playing fixed, I would probably change my hand. But we're going to play this out and just see what happens. Now they have a Kong of eight cracks out. I'm going to discard the one. one Maybe if we hold on to the eight dot and the seven Two crack, dots. they'll put out another exposure in consecutive tiles. Well, actually, there's a pair of eight dots out. That's probably a safe tile. So the eight dot probably Two can go. Dots. But the seven and the red might be good tiles for a joker. Three dots. We'll see what happens. Okay, so we'll discard the eight. And here, you can eight see dots. we've got a six, seven. That six came in. If we had held the pair of sevens, we could have maybe switched to four, five, six, seven. That would be an example of playing at the category level as opposed to just picking a hand. One bamboo. So you want to keep tiles that give you options. And we went with four, five Three instead characters. of six, seven because we had a gap of no six. We picked up our first flower, which is good. So let's go ahead and discard the three crack. Three characters. So now we have no gaps. We could even claim a discard for Six the four characters. and for the dragon. What we need help with are the flowers and the three five bamboos. bands. So I think at this three point, dots. now there's a four. Let's go ahead and get rid of the six. This is where I probably would be tempted to switch to the consecutive pair hand with dragons. Dragon. Okay, but we're, we picked a hand, so we're going to see it through. I'm going to pung. Pung. We'll hold the four, band, or four cracks as joker bait. And if you want to know about joker bait, there is Red a dragon. link in the video description below of videos that demonstrate how that works. Basically, you hold a pung. pair that you don't need. Later in the game, around the third wall, you Three discard dots. one of the tiles. Somebody makes an exposure with a joker, and you use the when second one in. to get that joker. Let's see if we can make it work. Oh, look, we got a 4-5. That characters. pair hand would have, would have been really, uh, had a really Six great possibility. Characters. So we're committed, though, to this fifth hand down at the moment. Hi, JL. Eight oh, Linda. Bamboos. Okay, yep, we'll Red be done. Dragon. We'll be done at uh, 4.30 today. Thank you for coming Seven by. Dots. We're just talking about right now picking a hand, Eight and we actually picked a hand right from the dealt hand. So we're playing the fifth hand down with the green dragons. Six. Bamboo. And we're, we're really needing flowers and a five band. We had a gap at the beginning with no flowers, and we drew one. So we're going to discard two band, and we'll hold two the four bamboos. five for a little while. Now, there's a four crack out that went out in the first round of discards, but nobody wanted it. So that'll probably be the first one that I let go. Five dots. Let's hope the four bam comes down or we Six draw a five bam before they start going out. Because that's a bit weak. Or we, get, we need a... Oh, Joker, that's nice. Now, let's discard four crack since it's already out. <coughs> so when you discard... <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> discard tiles that have already been discarded that nobody Fine wanted. Bamboo. Okay, now there's our one of our tiles. We're gonna go ahead and Kong. Kong. So we have a Joker out. Four characters. Now we're light on flowers. Nine bamboo. Oh, I know. I, I If I were not playing a fixed hand, I would have played Six the uh, the pair hand. I would have switched. But Six we're, we're seeing this through and Seven we'll, we'll see how it goes. If you make the right decisions, the decisions at the characters. right time, any style of play will Two work. Characters. You just have to make the right decisions at the right time to get the tiles you need and even keep options in Go case on. the hand you picked falls through. So they're playing uh, right, right. probably six, seven, eight consecutive Kongs in mixed suits. So they need seven BAMs 
nine dots. They could be playing five, six, seven, eight. Nine Pun dots. Okay, we got we got our Joker for a flower. Five characters. They could be playing f uh, five, six, Four seven, dots. eight. Pung Kong, Pung Kong, second hand down. Five dot, there are two Five out. Characters. We don't, yeah, we're, we don't need that. But all the seven cracks are out. Since the seven cracks are out, I think they're two playing. Set, they need this seven bam, so I'm going to get rid of it now. Seven Let's bamboos. say if they take it. Kong. Yep. Now they need a flower to win. North wind. Kong. Hi, Kim. She says, uh, beginner Three lessons are characters. good for everyone to watch. That's a good way to look at it. There's always something to learn. So we have north and south cross from us. Two jokers available. I do not want, I, I need a flower really Green badly dragon. at the moment. Okay, let's throw the one. one we are now heading into the end game, which we'll talk about uh, later. We're not going to talk about that right now because it is a little more advanced. We're just... At the first three games are going to be about picking a hand. And this first one is fixed, where we pick a hand right from the beginning. Red dragon. We need a four bam and a flower. Red dragon. Let's get rid of the two since that two is characters. The, we the less used tile. There's only one out. The five crack is a good discard because there are two out. So we're now in the end game. We need to think about defense at this point. The player to the right needs a flower to win. And we're one away. Nine bamboos. Nine dots. They got their flower. So we got one away. Picking a hand right from the beginning. They have six, seven, eight mixed suit Kongs. That's the third hand down. They did have a joker, so it was not pure. Um, that was Barney. All right. Over here, East was playing the year hand. They were ready on a white dragon. Over here, they were playing the big year hand, they needed white dragons, which were all, all but one were in the wall. So we had two players looking for white dragons. That's why that particular tile is risky to discard in the, in the end game. You want to get rid of those tiles before the end of the third wall. All right, so we're going to join another table. And this time, we're going to play at the category level, and we're not going to pick a hand until after the Charleston. Then we're gonna pick a hand. I call this um, a, an adaptive fi fixed hybrid style. So we're gonna stay adaptive during the Charleston and then we'll pick a hand and stick with it. So let's go ahead and join a table. Does anybody have any questions about playing a fixed style of play? And if anybody plays that way, let me know. And there's no right or wrong. It's really more about your confidence level and comfortability. Uh, as I was saying before, and any, some of you might have missed this, some, when you're first learning how to play the game, it's a complex game, so it takes a while to gain confidence with decision making. And some teachers will train you to pick a hand right away. That is what I call a fixed style of play, when you pick a hand from the beginning. And sometimes it works if you make the right decisions and maybe even hold some tiles for option B or plan B. This particular style that we're going to do now is a little more flexible. We're going to play adaptive and then we'll pick a hand so it's kind of a hybrid we're not going to pick a hand until the end of the charleston we're going to build around the strength of a hand which is going to either be a multiple 
or the predominant pattern. And we're gonna gather as many tiles as we can to support the strength of the hand. Whatever category we can play with the most of our tiles, that's what we'll go for. So we just, at this point, need players. <coughs> Ad uh, adaptive is, yes, flexible. You play at the category level till you run out of discards. When you run out of discards, then you pick a hand, and we'll do that next. I call that adaptive, an adaptive style of play. You don't pick a hand till you run out of discards. Sometimes it's not even till the end of the third wall. So here we go, we're gonna do a hybrid, adaptive fixed, we're gonna stay flexible at the category level during the Charleston, and then we're gonna pick a hand and stick with it. So I'll sort, <coughs> sort my tiles, we have a pair of flowers this time, so whatever we play, we're gonna use those flowers. We do have a joker, we have a pair of eights. So that is where I start my multiples, flowers and eights. So I look at the rest of my tiles. By process of elimination, I keep as many of them as I can and I pick a category that will use them. In this case, I think the predominant pattern is gonna be six, seven, eight, nine, consecutive run in mixed suits. So we can discard these tiles, one dragon west. Actually, let's keep the west because we could even maybe play east and west with eights. We don't have an east though and we need a pair there. That's the fifth hand down under winds and dragons. So right now we're in between winds and dragons and consecutive run. So this is a little more uh, advanced than a fixed style of play. So let's stick with the plan. We're gonna get rid of these three tiles and that's a, a decent pass. It's a little risky because we have a three, four consecutive in two suits and we have a one, three for little odds, two suits. So there's always gonna be some level of risk. You just wanna look at the tiles that you have to pass and try to send the most benign pass that you can to your opponent. But you wanna focus on your hand first. All right, so here we have an eight. So now we have a pong, and we also have a pair of nines. I, at this point, would probably give up on the west for east and west with eights because we have a gap with no eight, or no east, sorry. So I'm thinking we should focus on uh, eight, nine, Seven, eight, nine, if we can get an eight, a seven bam, we could play the mixed suit Kong hand. And we do have a joker that we could use. So now we have a seven crack. We have a six, seven, eight, seven, eight. We have to pick something to get rid of. This nine, since we have no seven bam and it's a different suit and we have seven, eight, I think we should break up the eight and keep the six because we could play the third hand down in, e in a one suit. So let's give up the nine. Now this is gonna be a little risky because we're passing two year tiles. So we're focusing and then we get the, the seven. All right, so here, here's something that we can try. Let's give up the six and see if we can give a, uh, get the seven bam back. If we can get the seven bam back and maybe even the nine dot, we can go back to that mixed suit option, third hand down. So now we are in consecutive run category. We're not gonna pick a hand yet. <coughs> uh, so we're gonna stay flexible until the end of the Charleston. Okay, we have tiles we can pass. I'm hoping that we can get either a seven bam or nine dot back. A red dragon or even the six back would be good. Any one of those would be great. And a lot of times you'll see the same tiles going around. So here we have a nine, seven, nine. There were no seven dots that went around in the Charleston. Our opponent wants only two tiles, so that's perfect, because then we can keep the, all the seven nine there and see if we can maybe get either the seven bam or nine dot back in this last pass. 
We got a nine crack. When and when? that's actually great because we we can do seven, eight, nine, one suit Kongs. I'm going to discard North since I'm not playing North Winds. Wind. I would discard the Winds first. And the reason for that is six characters. The Winds are in one category South except wind. for one hand in the year category one and bamboo. one hand in the singles and pairs category. Five so. I discard wins because the number tiles are going to be more likely to have exposures with jokers, and I can maybe use those discards in my hand. We're going to pass, of course. We're not ready for a nine dot. We did get a flower. Let's go ahead and discard nine bamboos. Nine bamboos. All right, so... Back to what I was talking about with the wins. One if I'm not playing wins, I'll discard them and hold number times because they're going to be in exposures with jokers, and we could Seven get dots. the joker by holding number tiles as opposed to holding wins and dragons because there are fewer hands with wins and dragons than number tiles as a whole. Six bamboos. So we'll see how it goes. We'll see if we Eight can get a joker. Dots. In this case, we actually have joker bait with the seven bam. Since there's a nine dot out, Five and bamboos. the person who South wind. got a nine dot during the Charleston is keeping it, Six unless bamboos. that nine dot was the discard. Um, nine dots. Okay, there it is. So I would not play the mixed suit Kong hand because there's two nine dots out. One bamboo. We would need two jokers for that. I think I would rather play seven, eight red dragon. Nine dots. Or seven, eight, nine. Since seven, eight, red dragon, third hand from the bottom, uses three flowers, let's One define character. a joker as a red dragon and play that fourth hand down. Six characters. Oh, there's another flower. Let's, we only need three flowers for that hand. I don't remember. Did I pick this hand after the Charleston? That's what I was supposed to do. Bamboo. Seven, eight. I think I picked... Um, the third hand down, and we still can do it, actually. I think that's what I was going to do. So let's eight go ahead dots. and do that, since that's what I have said. So we're going to play 7, 8, 9. We could still even switch, but we're playing adaptive fixed. So we picked a hand, third hand Two down. Dots. I was either going to do the the uh, mixed suit Kongs or one suit Kongs. Two bamboos. So, sorry, I think I forgot to, to mention that right Six after the Charleston. Characters. But 7, 8, 9, one, one suit character. Kongs is what we're playing. Third hand down. We need one more three tile. Dots. One more tile to get set. There are three six cracks out, so I wouldn't keep that. Six characters. So you always want to look at what has been discarded and decide that way. Right now we have Joker Beat with the seven. Three dots. We can claim... A nine Kong crack or a seven Kong. crack to make a Kong, and we can Kong the eight. So what we really need right now is a seven, seven crack dots. or nine crack. We ended up getting that east. East wind. Uh, hi, Peggy. Kong We're playing a, an adaptive fixed style of play. We were adaptive One, during the Charleston, and then we picked a hand third Six hand down, bamboo. and we're going to see it through. We're kind of comparing different ways Three of picking characters. a hand. The first, you and maybe you missed the first game, we picked a hand right from the deal, and we were one away from Three ready, bamboo. and somebody won. This one, we played at the category level, and after the Charleston, we picked a hand, or a couple picks thereafter. I forgot to, to pick a hand. But this is the hand Seven that we were characters. talking about. Let's go ahead and Kong. So this is the hand we were focused on during the Charleston. We're going to focus on that. <coughs> so what we need right nine. now is a nine crack or a joker. We do have joker bait, though. And the next game, we're going to play adaptive throughout, all Let's the way until win. we have to make a decision. So when we run out of discards, that's when we'll pick a hand and we'll stay flexible the whole way through. And three characters. the reason we're going with this approach is because Two I took a poll characters. at the beginning of the live stream 
we ended up getting the red dragon. That was the other hand I was thinking about, fifth hand down. Red dragon. But, because we had three flowers, but um, we picked a hand, third hand down. That was what we focused on towards the nine end of the Charleston. Characters. And we're not ready for the nine crack. And that, that's one of the risks when you play fixed. Red dragon. What we need is a nine crack. So two characters. Let's see. Oh, I took a poll at the beginning of the live stream and asked for pain huh. points. How to pick a hand was four characters. A popular pain point. The other was making decisions huh. through the Charleston, which we're going to talk about in every game. And then the last pain point was how to switch. So those are the three objectives. How to pick a hand, Charleston decision making, and how to switch your hand. Those were the three objectives for the live stream. South wind. We got the nine bam, so we don't need nine that. We, what we really need right now is the nine crack nine or dragon. another joker. The joker for the two crack is... is characters. Not available. There are four North two cracks out. We got the Joker. And there goes our Seven Joker bait, vampires. and nobody wanted it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But now we're one away from ready, and it is uh, the Green end game. Dragon. We just entered the end game, and we happen to have already oh known our God. hand, and we're, we're set. So it worked out well because of the Joker. Seven bamboos. Right in the nick of time, too. Five dots. So this will be a good discard then. Five dots. Yeah, nobody wants that. Now the seven crack is still available. We could pick that. One character. This two bam, there's only one out. So that's what I'm going to discard. Two bamboos. I want to discard risky tiles or as early as possible. Or switch one to dot. defense. Since we're one away from ready, I would play to win here. Seven dots. One bamboo. Seven bamboos. So a seven crack. One dot. And of course our Kong tiles is what we're looking for right now. Red dragon. White dragon. Oh, green dragon is a good safe discard. Green dragon. There are three five dots out, so that's a good discard too. North wind. So no eight cracks are out. One nine crack is out. One dot. This hand is viable. South wind. We got our nine crack. Five So dots. it worked out. Adaptive fix worked out. In this case, we're ready to Three win characters. on an eight crack or a nine crack. And we're one dot. semi stealth mode. We have only one exposure. So no one's going to know what we're West playing wind. unless they watched our discards. Three characters. Which is kind of hard to do in this layout. Seven dots. So we're looking for eight or a nine crack to win. Five Third bamboos. hand down. Seven crack would be nice. We could self-pick our win. Two bamboos. Wrong suit. Eight bamboos. That was a fresh tile too, by the way. But we're playing to win. I would risk a discard because we're ready to win. And there's only two exposures out with our opponent, so we two don't know what they're playing. Blues. Eight dots. Oh, that's a good discard. There are three six bams six out, bamboos. so that worked out well. Three dots. Three dots. I think this, lay, this layout is easier um, because Seven I can kind of count backwards up until probably the middle game. Nine dots. Seven characters. Oh, they let a joker go with that seven crack. Joker. Oh, okay. So Nine we bamboo. had a wall game. The eight crack someone was holding. Well, we'll look at each player's hand here. So the first game we lost because somebody won. We were one away from ready. With this, and that was a fixed style of play. With this one, <coughs> this is an adaptive fixed hybrid. 
we stayed flexible during the Charleston, and then we picked a hand. We're ready to win, but we ended up in a wall game. So it's kind of a long game. So let's just look really quick at what everyone was playing. We had like numbers with fours. They were ready to win on a flower. Let's see. Uh, there were only two flowers out. So the flowers were in, each, in our hands. One, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, seven, eight. The flowers were all used up. And then this player was playing, it looks like they were maybe trying for a year hand, but they were building up threes. They didn't have any one dot or four dot because the player to the uh, west was playing like numbers with fours. I think that's what they were doing. I'm not sure. Maybe a year hand gone bad. And then this player, it looks like they were trying for the 2468 concealed hand. They might have been trying for the pair hand, the 2468 pair hand. And of course, for us, we were ready to win. All right. Okay. See you later, Patricia. Thank you for coming by. All right. Now we are going to play adaptive. We're not going to pick a hand till we run out of discards. We're going to stay at the category level. When we run out of discards, that's when we'll pick a hand. And it could be any time during the game. Sometimes you can even pick a hand during the Charleston. It just depends on what happens with the decision making along the way. So let's go ahead and join a table. Uh, there is a table here we could join. Let's go 250. That is um, usually beginners play that table and I don't sometimes I won't play there because I'm advanced and I don't want to take advantage but you know if, if everybody had that mindset then they may never get a player to join them. So every now and again I will play at that table but I try to limit when I do that because most of the time people are just learning how to play. <coughs> However, if you play with people who are better than you in a live game, you can shorten your learning curve just by observing what they do. <coughs> I don't know if that works online so much because there's a lot of situational awareness that goes on in a live game that you can discern just by being observant. Incidentally, since we have time, we're waiting for two more players. I finished a book over the holidays um, on body language. And this was written by a retired FBI agent. It was a fascinating book. But I've been studying body language for quite some time, and I consider myself to be an empath also. So with those two, you know, with the body language knowledge that I've learned and, <coughs> and being um, sensitive to people's, you know, mannerisms and tells, I can learn a lot in a live game. So keep that in mind. Let's go ahead, since we don't want to spend too much time, let's go ahead and join that 250 table. I don't want to wait too long on that. Okay, Stephanie's asking, how do you choose your table? After this game, I'll show you. I do have uh, some videos that can help you with the, the interface here at Mahjong Time. And I'll leave a link in the video description below. <coughs> it's called Mahjong Time Helpful Tips. All right. Here we have lots of singles, but we have a multiple, the seven dot. And that's where we're going to start. That's the strength of the hand right there, that pair. So I'm going to look at the rest of my tiles, and I'm going to gather as many as I can for a particular category, and we're going to focus on that category. In this case, I see a lot of six, seven, eight, nine, and we could even do, <coughs> excuse me, we could even do big odds, seven, five, seven, seven, nine. So we're going to give away little tiles. 
Now this is going to be a very risky pass though. One, three, four, I wouldn't do that. I would break it up and whittle down right now. So we have five, six, seven, white dragon. Let's go ahead and give up, um, let's give up the eight and, and maybe the one. We gotta move it along here. <coughs> one, three, crack, seven, nine, dot. Uh, one, three, crack, seven, nine, are you talking about the concealed hand? Or you, oh, you were talking about the mixed suit, the first hand, we have no ones. So I downgrade any hand with a gap. So here we have tiles we can pass. I'm gonna hold the three so that maybe if there's something I'm missing, we'll see. <coughs> Are you thinking about the uh, first odd hand on the right with mixed suits? One, three, five, bam. This hand right here, one, three, seven, nine, five, bam. Is that the hand you're talking about right there? That would be building around the seven dot. We could also maybe play six, seven consecutive run with the white dragon. So let's give up the six crack. <clears throat> Okay, we've we've got a one three. Let's see if we can get the the one and the three back. We got a five, so that's another multiple. So I would hold that and give up. Let's see, we have one three five seven nine. Right now it looks like odds, but we do have some potential for six seven dragon. If we get the one three crack back, I think it looks really good for that odd hand. Let's see. Yeah, I don't think we could use the five right now. So we'll give up the five in the east. <coughs> so we're in between consecutive run and odds. Now we have a pung of seven dots and a pair of white dragons. So we're kind of in between here. We are passing across, so we have to pick a hand. Let's go ahead and focus on the odd hand. We could always fall back with an eight dot or a six dot coming back to us and the white dragon. We got a, we got a Kong now of sevens. Okay, so we're on last right. Let's pass one blind. We're gonna pass one blind. We might still get the one three, or if we get the six dot back, we could still play six seven dragon. No, no keepers here. So we have, they want three tiles. I would not pass a white dragon. I really rarely do that. We'll, we'll give them, we'll give them three and stick with the, the year, the, um, that, category or the odd category. Let's just give it up and focus on the odd category, hoping for one three back. We got a three back, but it's the wrong suit. We do have five, seven, nine potential though. Let's discard East. So <clears throat> we're in odds and I really wouldn't pick a hand until we run out of discards, but it looks really good for the first Sound hand. Win. Mixed suits, we have no gaps but let's stay flexible and pick a hand when we run out of discards. West wind. Three we did end up getting a seven. If we, if we get the right tiles, we can maybe even play the pair hand. Five, seven, nine pair Eight hand. Bamboos. Right now we have Joker bait with the white dragons. <clears throat> East wind. There's an eight. I don't think I would switch to consecutive run here. Eight characters. Oh, yeah. Evelyn was asking for the name of that book. East Wind. I have it in the dining room. I'll go get it in a few minutes. I don't remember what it was called. Four bamboos. Four dots. We got a one dot, which is an even tile or an odd tile, I mean. 
Let's get rid of the the flower. Bamboo. So we've got one. We've got odds and Joker B. Three dots. Okay, Martha's asking, how one does bamboo. needing pairs at this point affect your choice of hand? It's minimal at this point. It's really joker bait right now. Seven characters. Is that what you mean? Right now I'm holding this pair Green um, because it's joker bait. But really, Six the dots. strength of the hand is going to be with the five, bam, seven Green dot. Dragon. So I want to play something with those two pairs. There's really, because uh, odds, win. okay, there's a five dot now. Let's get rid of, let's, let's keep the joker bait. Let's see here. Let's get rid of the seven crack. Seven characters. If we get a three dot, oh, there are two three dots Eight out. Eight characters. Yeah, we need the one, the one crack and the three, three crack dragon. right now. But even one of, either one of those would help this hand a lot. One dot. Okay, red dragon can go. We're kind of red in between dragon. five, seven, Six nine dots. big odds in the first hand. One bamboo. But if we had a joker, we could maybe play the one suit option too. One bamboo. Six characters. <clears throat> The one three never came back. Someone's holding one th the one three crack. Two bamboos. White dragon. Okay, we're gonna pass. Okay, let's see. So stick with the hand even if the second tiles of pairs don't come in. No. Six no, bamboos. I would I would stay flexible all from all the whole way through. So at this point we've got that pong. I would go ahead and get rid of my joker bait Mine right now, <clears throat> but we have a weakness here because our pairs, uh, I'm sorry, the one crack is a pair that we need and we only have one. Once that pair is secured, Three then I would characters. push that hand, but I don't want to commit to it until I get that pair. Two dots. We've got a three now. So that, that makes me feel a little bit better White as far dragon. as giving up on the 1-5. <clears throat> so you Eight always want to be mindful of your weakness, definitely. Oh my gosh, look at this. I need to go close Wind my blinds. Wind. I've got this big sunlight in my right there at my throat. That's really Three dots. bizarre. Hold on. I'm gonna. That's going to distract me One now. Hold dot. on. Seven bamboos. Oh my goodness, that looks terrible. Oh, oh how long has that been shining on my neck? <laughs> oh my dragon. gosh, that look, looked terrible. All right. <clears throat> Hope I didn't eight miss a tile. Bats. All right, eight bamboos out. So eight this this bamboos. is looking good. There are no nine dots out. That's the weak. The one dot and the nine dot are the weakness, Three and those bamboos. are both pairs. So this is kind of a risky hand. And we're still in the five middle game, dots. so we're okay at the moment. If the five bam goes down, I will call it. Because we still have some flexibility. Nine characters. Kong. Okay, there's a joker. One character. Pong. You don't want to commit. Okay, now there's a pair of one cracks. There are Two still characters. There are still there's still Four one more characters. one crack out. We got to really watch this. Now, that joker, we could take it and one switch character. to Okay, now the hand is dead. We can't play this hand because there are, we can't Nine get our pair. Dots. So now we have to switch. So this is why I try to keep all the tiles in that category because Four now dots. we have to switch to a big odd hand. The three cracks are now Joker B. So that was one of the pain points from somebody, how to switch a hand. Here's a six. We can maybe play consecutive run. So let's go ahead and discard the one, one crack. We have five, six, seven, or five, seven, nine. Joker. So we're in recovery mode now. Four bamboos. If we get a five crack, we might be able to play the pair hand. 
the 579 Seven pair characters. hand. So let's see what happens. Right now we have Joker wins. bait with the three crack. Eight characters. We do have some consecutive run potential with five, six, seven. One bamboo. There are two six dots out though, so we would and a five dot out. So Red we would dragon. we would need okay now this is interesting. Let's get rid of the three crack. Here we have three four, characters. five, six, seven, second hand down under consecutive run. Eight characters. There are two four bams out, so we would need a joker there. And then, of course, we would need a joker for the six dot. So that there's potential there. Second hand down under consecutive run. Six characters. I think maybe let's get rid of the two bam. Two I think bamboos. that maybe the consecutive run category might be. Oh, shoot. They got to win. <coughs> So they won self-pick, north and south with nines. Our hand went dead with the one crack. So north and south with nines, second hand, uh, let's see, fourth hand down. And then over here they were playing four, five, six, seven, second hand down under consecutive run. They needed to Pung and Kong pair up. Yeah, they had a ways to go. And then over here it looks like they were trying for a year hand. They were ready to win, actually, on a flower. And then this player, poor player, their hand went dead and they had to switch. But we recovered to probably a consecutive run hand. All right, so somebody had asked how to pick a table. And I'll have a link in the video description below to Mahjong Time Helpful Tips. What you want to look at first is the game name. Some of these were created by Mahjong Time. All the ones that say auto are typically the ones created by Mahjong Time. Any with different, you know, kind of uh, custom names are going to be player tables because you can create your own table at, and it'll be there temporarily. When it loses popularity, it goes away. It's retired. So one of those hand uh, tables is, oh no, this is a system table. If you click on a table and then go to table info, you can see who created it. So Escape Hatch was created by the system, which is Mahjong Time. Let's go system. Let's see here. Fast, uh, fun but fast system. All these are system. Let's see. <coughs> they all say system. Huh. Let's see here. That's interesting. Usually it has a player name for some, like this Kelly's Law. I'm not sure. I think that's a player table. Anyway, you look at the table name to get a little information because a lot of times it'll tell you if it's an auto pass table or not. Auto pass is when someone discards a tile and the game will pass you by or not prompt you to claim it if they know you don't need it based on the tiles in your hand. That's auto pass. So typically people will play auto pass tables. If you see a table called no auto pass, like this one here, that means that you're going to be prompted on every discard to click pass. Those can be a slow game because players either don't know to click pass or they are not paying attention. So it could be a really long game. Most players prefer an auto pass game. So let's go ahead and join this one right here. Okay, uh, Linda, thank you for coming by. I'm glad to see you here. Have a great rest of your day. Um, let's see here. Okay, so uh, Evelyn, I'm going to do these fundamental live streams every Tuesday afternoon. So uh, tell your friends, if you, if you have friends who are new to the game, to come to the live stream because we're going to focus on fundamentals every Tuesday afternoon from 3 to 4.30. We sh should be able to get in two more games and we'll next focus on, I think we were going to do maybe switching a hand. We did have an opportunity to cover that with one hand. Um, so let's see if we can come up with... A situation where we need to switch a hand and then maybe we can talk a lot about the decision-making during the Charleston so just as a reminder 
look in the video description below later because I have to update it for the link to my <clears throat> basic training reference which is what I give players at my lessons and then let's see oh and I'll also have a link in there for Mahjong time helpful tips so if you have any questions let me know oh thank you Evelyn yes please do share with your friends especially if people are new to the game or if they're maybe playing a while and are having trouble with picking a hand or decision making during the Charleston or even strategy because we will talk about strategy only lightly we won't focus on strategy <coughs> it'll be more about decision making and picking a hand and then maybe how to recover your hand well I guess that goes with picking a hand or switching a hand and then on Thursdays will be open play so we'll do live streams on Thursdays but we'll talk about anything that comes up <clears throat> both fundamentals and advanced concepts so if we can get players we'll be able to focus on decision making during the Charleston and since we're waiting I'll just talk through it when you first get your dealt hand the first thing that you should look for is the strength of the hand I have a lot of videos called random pulls that focus on identifying the strength in a dealt hand and if you have a set of tiles at home you can do this exercise just take 13 random tiles sort them and identify the strength of the hand don't do anything more just focus on the strength of the hand oh here we go someone there's a game so when you first get your dealt hand you look for the strength of the hand it's going to be one of two things a multiple or the predominant pattern and we'll start right now with that so <clears throat> in this case we're going to look for the predominant pattern because we have no multiples if you have no, no multiples by process of elimination pick a category that uses the most of your tiles in this case I think either one, two, three, four, or little odds. That's going to use the most of our tiles. Actually, all but four. So we're going to pass big tiles and the wins. We do have one, three, five, seven, nine in mixed suits. One, three, five, little odds looks really good, actually. Let's hold the nine and give up the two because big odds are not big odds but odds look really good too we're kind of in between consecutive run and odds so now we have a two and a three which would have given us consecutive so I think we should go consecutive <coughs> uh, okay so we're gonna do consecutive run one two three um, when you have mixed suits I usually pick four numbers in a range let's give up the three crack because we still could do little odds but when you have mixed suits if you look at the consecutive run category you're going to have between two three and four numbers in a range in mixed suits so I usually pick four numbers around my multiple in this case we now have two multiples two and four so that is what we're going to focus on two four since we have no 6 8 those would be gaps I would not consider 2 4 6 8 we've got gaps but we have no gaps with 1 through 4 or 2 through 5 we're kind of in between since we have ones let's go ahead and give up on the 5 band we could play 2 3 4 5 the second hand down as an example I wouldn't pick a hand though until I run out of discards so we're going to stay flexible now we have a multiple with one two and we have a three four. Second hand down is looking really good we're going to continue the charleston we do have one two three i think at this point i would give up the one dot or the five dot 
we could still maybe do two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and give up eight, six, one. <coughs> oh, you know what? We do have some potential for two, four, six, eight with two, four in the middle. Okay, let's give up three and the, oh, no, 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 no. We have to pick. <coughs> let's give up the eight. <coughs> We could do two, four, six, eight. Sorry, hold on. <clears throat> okay, we're gonna pass these. <coughs> hold on, I need a cough drop. <coughs> There's a little spot in the back of my throat. <clears> throat> <coughs> so sorry. Okay, if we get... <coughs> oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <coughs> oh my gosh. <coughs> I'm choking. I'm okay though. I can breathe, so I'm okay. All right, here we go. I still have to do another live stream tonight. <coughs> oh my goodness. All right, we need to pass. So we have one, two, three, four, or two, three, four, five. We really don't need the six. But that six we could maybe use with four, six if we get the eight back. So let's give up the three. Sorry, hold on. <coughs> I think I, <coughs> I thought I got it. We got the eight back. And we're now at the end of the Charleston. So we're in between one, two, three, four. So let's hold the one, three. But we also have potential for two, four, six, eight. This would be the fourth hand down. So sorry about all the coughing, you guys. This is day nine. <coughs> oh my gosh, it's me. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Seven dots. Anyway, day nine. <coughs> I'm on antibiotics, so now. Sounds so weird. hopefully I'll get better. <clears throat> All right, now we have discards. We have two discards before we have to pick a hand. So we're going to stay two flexible. Dots. Both two of these characters. hands use the pairs that we have. Although if we were to two go with characters. one, two, three, four, then we would use all of our multiples. If we play two, four, six, eight, we'd have to throw away a pair. One bamboo. We have to decide right now. I'm gonna pwn and give up on two, four, six, eight because we have no gaps and Five it uses dots. all our multiples. So we're gonna play one, two, three, four. <coughs> so sometimes you're gonna be forced to make a decision. Seven characters. If we were to let that go. Four bamboos. Who knows where that one bam is? If someone's playing a pair hand, we might not ever get it. <coughs> What's Ben's and eight? Seven bamboos. Eight dots. All right. <clears throat> Let's get rid of the eight dot. Eight dots. Okay. Eight bamboos. <coughs> Is that an inhaler? Red. <coughs> My husband got an inhaler. One dot. She didn't give me one though because I didn't have this Eat cough when I was in the doctor. In the doctor's office, this cough kind of came back today. <laughs> so this thing has been coming and going. It's been crazy. But I think I finally got that tickle. Two bamboos. Okay, we've got a Kong. Kong. So now we're weak with our three, four dot. 
five bamboos. I want to hold the flower wind. for a little while. Four characters. Eight characters. We're going to get rid of winds. West wind. You can see all those winds out there. Nobody wants them. Seemingly. West wind. There's one eight Red bam wind. out. No six dots are out, so I'm going to hold it. Two dots. West wind. Let's see if we can get the two bam. Three characters. <laughs> Three dots. Seven bamboos. We needed that three dot. We're not Eight ready for bamboos. it. But that's the first one out. There's more. Orchid. We have Joker bait with the flower now. Now there was a hesitation there. Two bamboos. Somebody needs flowers. Six dots. Somebody's holding flowers besides Seven me. Bamboos. We got the joker. Six that can dots. help us with the three dot or the four dot. Three <coughs> We'll take whatever comes first. Green dragon. And this next exposure is going to tell everybody what we're playing. One character. We'll get rid of that. White dragon. Green dragon. North wind. Uh, if this, if this cough, maybe I should call Five my doctor's characters. office after this live stream because seven bamboos. I'm leaving on it. I'm going to Tampa on Thursday. Nine characters. If I'm coughing like this on an airplane, I'm going to need bamboos. to wear a mask. You know when you have a cough and everybody stares at you? Four characters. I'm going to have to wear a mask if I'm coughing like Eight this. Eight characters. And then everyone will stare at me because of that. Six characters. <coughs> okay. Oh, somebody got a win. All right, well, good for them. We, we had Joker bait to get rid of. Okay, so they have 369. This is the first hand. Pung, pung. Or pair pair pong pong kong. First hand under 369. This player was playing, it looks like, um, addition. And this player was playing uh, news concealed. <coughs> All right. So we're going to exit out of this. And I'm going to step away for just a minute. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> because I need a tissue and I need to get that book. Oh no, we're starting, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. All right, now. We've got two jokers and we have three multiples. Wow, look at this, one, two, six, eight. This is when you get, <clears throat> you get multiples and they don't all go together. What's one or the other? Since we can use two with two, four, six, eight, I think that's what we should do and break up the one. So we'll discard five west one and go for evens. Oh my gosh, I'm a mess. Okay. Oh my goodness, now my bangs are all wacky. Okay. Oh, here's some consecutive rent potential. Six, seven, eight. Let's get rid of one north eight. All right. <clears throat> The blooper reel, oh my gosh, I know. Hacking. <coughs> <coughs> Blowing my nose. Oh my gosh, <coughs> this has been terrible. 
I, I was tempted to cancel, but I didn't want to disappoint anybody. Oh, look, we got an eight and a nine. Here's an eight and a nine. I think I would focus on two, four, six, eight. Let's give up the nine because we could still play six, seven, eight. Six, seven, eight consecutive run. We got the four. Now there's no gaps. That's what I would focus on. Okay, we have three tiles. We have three tiles. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say no. No, we'll go, we'll keep going. Let's hope we don't get what we need. Sometimes I, I wanna stop the Charleston. <coughs> Let's hope that we don't get anything we want on this pass. <coughs> I hope we don't get a four. Cross your fingers. We don't want any keepers. No keepers. Now we have tiles to pass. Because you got to pass fully to go across. This will be our last game. And then I'll be able to take a breather before the live stream tonight. Tonight's live stream is a table talk with Slava. We're going to talk about tournaments. So if you're free at 7 p.m. Eastern, come back. We'll talk about term tournaments. <coughs> okay, we have three tiles to pass. <coughs> no keepers, but we did get the seven back. So now my, my opponent is not here. So I'm gonna pass risky. They left the table, so it doesn't matter what I pass. Let's see if we can get a four band. <coughs> Our hand is actually set. We can pung and kong. All we need really is that four, and we could be ready to win on that. So here, I would hold the seven just for a little while, just in case the four is in an exposure or is discarded. <coughs> I think I might need to use my husband's inhaler. Seven bamboos. Okay, we're gonna pass. One bamboo. Okay, we really want a four bam. We'll get rid of the three. Three dots. We do have some potential for two, four, six, eight second hand down. Two dots. North wind. Four dots. Oh my gosh, look what we got. Four we got dots. sevens. <clears throat> Nine dots. Seven characters. Thankfully, I'm virtual, so nobody Five can catch dots. my cold. Three dots. <coughs> One character. So we may Eight have to dots. make we may <coughs> we may have to make a decision. Really, the four bam is going to solidify this. Three dots. Oh, thank you, Linda. <coughs> I'm on day two of antibiotics, so, <clears throat> which reminds me, <coughs> I need to call the doctor's office because they messed up my prescription. Hmm. They sent two prescriptions for my husband. They were supposed to send one for my husband and one for me. And I forgot to call them. One so character. after this Fine game, character. we'll get off and I'll call the doctor's office and see if they have that benzonate. Is that what it was called? White dragon. Benzonate. One dot. <coughs> All right, let's see how this goes. We do have some green dragon. Plan bamboo. Okay, that see there it is. This is why you want to have options. 
because that four band Bone is a pair characters. for the first hand under evens we need a pa okay there's an eight band now okay so Two we're we're characters. looking real good now we need we need to move this along Five before characters. that other four One band character. goes down Five dots. <clears throat> oh, I know. It's all right. Let me see Three if I can dragon. call my Four husband. Dots. I forgot about it. I, I worked Three today dots. and then, okay, we got a flower. Look at this. We're one away from ready. Seven and this we can use over here. We're ready. We're ready Three to call dragon. on. Okay, we're going to pung. Pung. And we're ready to win on a four band. Seven bamboos. Ready to win on a four band. There's only one out. South wind. Eight dots. So this is looking really good. White dragon. I should have had the pharmacist call Four the dots. doctor's office, but all they said is we have two prescriptions for David, White but none dragon. for you. Nine bamboos. I should have said please call them back two because they characters. made an error. Plum. Four characters. Two dots. East wind. <coughs> Nine characters. <laughs> oh, ask them for Eight benzenate. Is, Orchid. <clears throat> is the benzenate a prescription or is it over the counter? Two bamboos. Pass. Oh, look at. Okay. Oh. Um, 8 p.m., 6 p.m. I'm going to discard the Joker. The reason I'm discarding the Joker is because we have no other exposure, so they don't know Five what we're playing, characters. and we might be able to go pure here. Five if, yep, there's a six. We'll discard the Joker. Joker. Oh, that's fine, too. So now we have only one more Joker to get rid of. If we draw that eight, we'll have a pure Two hand. Bamboos. We'll pass. <clears throat> White dragon. We need the four bam, but if we draw an eight bam, I'll, I'll discard this joker. There it is. Now we have a pure hand. Joker. All we need is a four bam to win a pure hand. Five bamboo. One bamboo. Two characters. Oh, three bam. <laughs> we need a four. Bamboos. We need that four bam. Five bamboo, seven dots. We need that four bam. I hope it's not in this player Three who bamboos. left the table. This player who left the table, they could be holding Nine those four characters. bams. This is why it's bad form to leave. But there could be a valid reason for it. Who knows? Nine bamboo, seven dots. We're looking for the four bam. Two dots. Another joker. At least nobody else is getting jokers. Joker. There's four jokers out right now. Three bamboo, south wind, seven characters, four bam, four bam, everybody say four bam. Pung. Okay, there's a joker. Three bamboo, seven <coughs> characters, nine dots, east wind. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. They could have lost One uh, lost Two connectivity. Characters. East wind. Five bam. Five bamboo. We need a four bam. Nine dots. South wind. Six bamboos. One dot. Okay, we have one, two, three more picks. One, two, three, four more picks. Four One more picks. Dot, seven dots. Nine bamboo. We got it. Mahjong. Self pick pure hand. That made all that coffee worth okay. it. We got it. We got it. <laughs> all right. I hope that you all enjoyed this live stream. I need to end it here. The live streams in, um, are an hour and a half, so <clears throat> for this beginner live stream, it's going to be from 3 in the afternoon to 4.30. And depending on how it is received, <coughs> the, 
we could move it to night time but that would mean that I would need to move my table talk which is the first or let's see second Tuesday of the month so let me know oh thank you Stephanie thank you Christine <coughs> okay <laughs> I know I'm so sorry about the cough <coughs> so what do you guys think about this afternoon time slot is this good or would an evening time slot be better normally I have about a hundred viewers with my live streams and any viewer I, I appreciate so even if one person comes I, I I'm okay with that but the more the better of course so would a nighttime live stream <coughs> be good or daytime Martha said that uh, she likes the afternoon evenings at five are dinner time yeah that's kind of hard because I understand that because I'm on the East Coast so if I go live at 7 p.m. Eastern <coughs> that's kind of hard for people on the West Coast okay the book here it is right here is it in screen what everybody is saying what everybody is saying by Joe Navarro, N-A-V as in Victor, A-R-R-O, Joe Navarro, ex-FBI agent's guide to speed reading people. Good stuff. Okay, so, <coughs> um, all right, well, we'll just keep testing this on Tuesdays. We'll go live in the afternoon and see how it goes. And again, this will be for fundamentals. Tonight's live stream is going to be on tournaments, so if you're new to the game, you might not want to go to the tournament um, live stream because we're going to really, you need to be, you need to be able to make really quick decisions uh, online, and that's what we're going to talk about, making quick decisions online and what it's like to play in a tournament at Mahjong time. You're welcome to come, of course, but it is advanced, so if you're free, I hope you'll join me. And thank you so much for joining me here this afternoon. We'll be back again next Tuesday for another live stream for beginners. So with that, I will sign off. And I'll watch the chat to see what everybody says about the timing. Right now, it looks like the afternoon is good. So please share with your other beginner friends. The more, the merrier. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next live stream, may all your picks be keepers. And I got it all done without a cough. <laughs>